So here we have it, the October Palafel Packs Premier Box. And I'm willing to bet some money there's either some kind of brush pen or ink in here because, you know, Inktober. <laughs> Let's see if I'm right. <laughs> Look at that. Okay. <laughs> This is some Amsterdam acrylic ink. What's this color called? This is called grayish blue. <laughs> Keep away from Elsa, is that what that means? <laughs> There's another one in here. This one is more of a royal blue. It's patholo blue. You can see the colors. Oh, that's there. You can see really well there. So far I'm seeing a lot of blue. So we got two blue inks. Blue maggots. Oh look, a brush pen. Was I double right? Inks and a brush pen. This is actually the same brush pen that came in the Art Snacks box from last month. Oh, there's two Tombow brush pens. So one side is like, I think a bullet nib. And then the other side is a brush. Again, these are both blue colors. A light blue and a uh, bit of a mid-tone blue. This feels funny. <laughs> there's like a really weird texture. This Da Vinci Universal Synthetic Brush made in Germany. Ooh, ooh, that's a nice brush. Ooh, I like the pointiness of the bristles. Very nice. Feels like unfinished wood, but it also feels really light, like a balsa wood. Also in here, oh, this is cool. This is an acrylic marker in titanium white. Okay, so here we have a list of all the supplies. Naturally, they're doing an October themed box. So everything is inky and, uh, oh wait, but that, I don't even know why I didn't even notice there was a sketchbook in here. A tone blue mixed media, 15 sheets. It's pretty, ooh, that's a nice, that's some nice paper. That is not too bendy, you know. Wonderful. I've only drawn on this color paper once before, and that was when um, I did the... Was that a Strathmore as well? It was the sketchbook where you, like, design your own cover, and I have a video on that. It'll be fun to revisit that. So there's definitely a blue theme here. <laughs> blue maggots, blue paper, blue ink, blue brush pens. Oh, this is a black brush pen and a white marker. But... That's still a lot of blue. Come on. Well, these are eight bucks each. Whew. When I bought that like big thing of rainbow ink for Inktober, um, <laughs> that was like $33. It was a, that was a pretty penny. So yeah, inks are not cheap. Anyway, let's swatch everything out. Definitely gonna use it on the paper that we plan on drawing it on. Cause otherwise <laughs> kind of uh, defeats the point, doesn't it? We need to know what it's gonna look like on the actual paper we're using. That's why I always recommend if you buy like new markers or something to make a swatch page that's on the paper that you plan to use the markers. Cause colors can look very different on different papers. Even when it comes to like two different sets of white paper, it can look very different. And I think these are pretty popular in the bullet journal community. So there's the brush so you can get some fine points and some thick and you can then you switch to the other side and write very easily um, boo. if you keep going over the same spot it gets really dark <laughs> oh you can barely see this one. Oh, that is almost non-existent oh it starts like paper starts beating if you go over it too much with this one can you see i don't know if you can see that piece of paper that's just come off <laughs> Come on. Anytime you wanna. Oh, there we go. Ooh, yeah, that's very pigmented and opaque. I love it. And this is the Amsterdam acrylic marker. Well, that's not gonna get darker because it's opaque. <laughs> I'm liking that. I wish it was a little bit more of a fine point, but I can work with that. Hmm. I'm so stupid. Why did I? <laughs> Very nice. See, so yeah, this one's having the same problem I kind of had with these the last time I used them, and that's that they sort of dry out at the end of like a stroke. Oh, this one's not. Oh, that's starting to peel. So I guess that's just probably the paper that doesn't really enjoy having a lot of uh, product on it. Maybe sound like a beauty guru. Product. You don't want too much product on your face. Okay, let's do this grayish blue because that one looks very pretty. Oh, that's really weird looking. Look, look at the little... Oh! I just squirted it. <laughs> oh, crap. We're all good. We're all good. All right. I don't know why I squeezed it. I didn't mean to squeeze it. It just... I just... I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Now we can get back to what we were doing, which I was showing you the funny... Let me squeeze this all out. Funny end on this dropper. <laughs> it's probably so stupid of me, but I think it's silly. It's like curved. Anyway, I'm gonna... I definitely had to show you because... Because <laughs> of the trouble I went through. Let's just drop some on here. Straight on there. Okay, that's bubbly. Brush provided. Let's see what that looks like. Very pretty. I like this color. And it's pretty opaque, like to a certain extent, to the point where it like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? I don't, 
What is going on today? Uh -huh. Just occurred to me, I probably could have just used some of that ink to draw with. Let's just go straight in and see what happens. Do, 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 do. Okay, so it's drying darker than when you put it down. So as it soaks into the paper, it gets darker, which is another good reason to do swatches. Cause like if I was putting this down, I'm like, yeah, that's the perfect color. And then when it dries, it gets darker and you're like, wait, that's not what I wanted. All right, brush is clean. Let's do the next blue and not spill any of it. See, now that those two are dry, they're kind of the same color. That's what I found. Ooh, that is gorgeous. So that's what it looks like with its solid ink. And then that's with some water. And I'm sure you can get even lighter than that. Did I test everything? Is that everything? Doesn't feel like a whole lot, but I know inks are expensive. Oh, that's handy. They posted the uh, Inktober prompts on the back of this. <laughs> I've had to grab my phone every time I want to start the Inktober prompts. <laughs> so this is going to be nice. I'm going to keep this on my desk, even though Inktober challenge is almost over. But <laughs> for the rest of it, I'm a bit late to opening this box. So they're kind of prompting us to do the Inktober challenge, which I have been doing over on my Instagram. If you haven't seen that, um, I'll have a link. I've been following all of these prompts and drawing something sort of based on it or inspired by each of these prompts. And I've actually already done today's because it's kind of been my routine to do it in the morning. Um, but <laughs> we could probably do Saturdays. That's the day this video is going up. Saturday is the 27th. So the prompt is thunder. And again, prompts aren't super, um, they don't need to be literal. Um, so I'm thinking, have you ever seen those pictures of like blue lightning? Like I know thunder and lightning aren't the exact same thing, but thunder makes me think of lightning. And I've been thinking of those blue, like lightning. It's like so bright and hot that it's blue. And we have all these blue supplies. It'd be kind of interesting to try and draw maybe some lightning or like a character that controls lightning, you know, that sort of thing, you know, brainstorming here. Just got really, really itchy. I don't know if I'm reacting to this ink. Oh yeah, see, that's where I spilled a ton of it. Oh no, am I allergic? That'd be terrible. I just start getting like hives or something. Dang. I already look like I have a disease. Oh, what's in this stuff? Now I'm concerned. <laughs> Crap, not that you in a different spot. Okay, so lightning. You got like a <laughs> nice Harry Potter lightning bolt. Cause then if we like color the center of that with this, it'll look really bright. This is just a thumbnail, so I don't really feel bad. I'm making a mess. <laughs> Get as close to that as possible so we can get some more color lightening it up, lightening it up a bit <laughs> what if we transition from the solid blue to the grayish blue i'm not sure why i didn't test that earlier but i am getting a really fun blending like cloudiness to it because what i'm looking with at pictures of lightning you have like that harsh line of the lightning but then there's like a lot of like glowing and fadiness around it and i'm thinking i can do that with the inks and then we went in with the acrylic and like this hey, 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 hey. i think i'm seeing something i'm liking I'm gonna have to look at some more pictures of lightning figure out what lightning looks like but I definitely want it to get darker like this. I like that darkness. It looks like night, but I like the way I was able to get it to sort of fog up around the lightning. I think what would be cool is like, you know how storm can control lightning. So maybe a character who's just like floating like storm from the X-Men. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Yes. You know what happens to a toad when struck by lightning? So maybe like a floaty girl like this. She's glowing, so she'll be like solid white and like if they're so hot, they're just burning with intensity. You can even use the, well, we should probably be using the tone of the paper a bit too, something like that. Like a crack of thunder. That, and then we could probably switch over to the darker color, which is really pretty. Oh, but you can't really blend that very well. Oh, I really like that color. It's really pretty to me. So we can blend everything out. Ooh, whoa. Because the darker that is, the darker we can get the pathal blue, the brighter the white's gonna look. Oh, some of that grayish blue already dried. For Inktober, I'm doing a much different thing. I'm focusing a lot on like line art. This is a bit more of a painterly technique. So it's kind of interesting using the same sort of supplies, but in a different way. I love the way the inks are like interacting with each other and creating these sort of organic watery shapes. I think that really suits lightning. What we're gonna do is take this little thumbnail, blow it up and draw it much bigger 
in more detail. I kind of like that. I really like the thumbnail. I like the contrast between the white acrylic marker and that really dark blue. So let's try and lay this character out on the page. Maybe, let me look at lightning one more time. Okay, so it like, it's really jiggity. Like that. Now let's draw our character. It'll probably cut right across here and mess it all up. Update on the itch situation. I'm feeling itchy on the right hand, which I didn't spill that much ink on, so thinking it's just a random freak occurrence that has nothing to do with ink. Could be interesting. But I also really like that like head-on, like powerful female character, like staring you straight down. So I think I'm gonna stick with that. Head'll be up here. Butty. The arms stretched out like this. In total control. Our little storm mohawk. Since this character might end up being mostly silhouette, we want to try and get all of the features to like show through in a silhouette. I mean like the face obviously you can't because she's looking straight on the camera. But like the hair, I want to try and get like a pretty fun shape that you're like, oh yeah, that's hair. <laughs> and that's another reason that I've stretched her arms out away from her body, because you'll see in like the thumbnail, you can tell like, oh, those are arms and these are legs because of the way that I've separated them from like the rest of the body. And your eye immediately knows, oh, those are arms. <laughs> Might have to move the character up, I ran out of space. <laughs> I also think I need to make the character smaller so we can have more of that dark blue color to make it look like night. Because if most of the pages end up being the white, we're not gonna have a lot of space for that dark. And you see how like, Going away from the character, it's getting darker. So we need space that's away from the character to get darker. Move the character up a little higher and hopefully be a little smaller. We can really play around with like the silhouette of this character and add some like sharp lines, maybe a little bit more like lightning, you know? Cause like, oh, right? <laughs> Something that helps me when I'm like having trouble in this region with like the hips to the legs, cause that can be a little tricky for me. Sometimes you just draw like a little panty line. I feel like it helps you realize, oh wow, this leg like sticks way off to the left. It's kind of like just guidelines. It's kind of like when you draw like the like guidelines on the head, helps you like figure out whether the eyes are lined up. This really helps me figure out like, oh dang, look at this hip compared to like that hip. Or if I really liked that hip, I also could have just made this one represent that one, you know. Now I think it's time to start adding in the ink. So we need to start top left, move our way to the bottom right so I don't put my hand in it. And uh, I think I'm gonna use this last. So that's when everything's gonna probably start really pulling together. But I think I need to do the ink first. I could probably go around everything with this just a little bit, just so I have a better idea of the shape. Here we go. All right, now start with the dark blue. And our work our way in. And then I liked when that dried and then I went over it again with a little bit more water. So it's a little bit more translucent and got closer to the edge. I think I, I really liked that look. So we're gonna stay pretty far away, which is kind of what this was probably should have been for. Kind of like as a guideline, like don't get any closer than this. Let's go in with the ink. Ah, the scary part, right? I think I'm just gonna grab some and drop it towards this outer edges. Drop some of the grayish blue around here. Might have been a little too much. That's gonna take forever to dry, but you know, you live and you learn. <laughs> I want that dark stuff to come way lower. Cause see, the character goes in. So, so should the uh, lightning, you know? See the swirlies happening? Ooh, I love it. Kind of reminds me of lightning, to be honest. Switch back to the grayish blue. Here we go, here we go. I think we're getting somewhere. I won't know until that's dry, really, if it worked. <laughs> and then once we add like the acrylic marker on top of the character, that'll really make everything pop, you know? I love the way once it like touches, it just latches on there. It's pretty cool. Connect these two colors. I think I need more water. That seemed to help with that. I don't know if I wanna have a smoother blend or if I like those crazy swirls. Let me zoom in and see if, can you see what's, do you see these swirls? How cool that looks? Like part of me wants to just keep it, but part of me wants it to be like a smooth blend. So I don't really know, but it looks sort of lightning-y, you know, like. Let me know what you would do. Would you smooth everything out or keep these crazy? Like, I feel like that makes more sense to keep it. Cause it's like, that's what the ink is doing. And I'm using ink. So it's like, why not let it be itself, you know? 
go. Okay, I think that's another section done. Any up there. Ooh, that looks really kind of cool. Go in here. Pretty close to that blue line. Blend that in here with the blue. More water, because it's not blending quite right. Yeah, the water seems to really help with the swirlies. Ooh, that's some really good ones right here. Look, those crazy little things. Like, I, if I tried to do that, like, just with my hand, it would not look anywhere near like that. Yeah, because over here I'm missing that, like, mid-tone that we had over here. So see, there's, like, the grayish blue, and then there's the all blue, and then there's this extra color in the middle. Not getting a lot of that over here. I guess I could just like take a palette and mix those two colors and get it. But I kind of like the way it naturally just created itself, you know? Okay, we need that darker blue and a bunch of water on the brush, I think. There we go. There we have the base layer of the background done. So now I'm just gonna let that dry and then we'll come back start working on some of the other areas. So it's been about an hour. It's mostly dry. You can see there's some shiny bits. So now what I think I'm gonna do is go in with the darker Tombow. And what I've noticed is it's almost that color, that mid-tone color I was looking for. So I'm just gonna fill in some areas that I didn't quite get the blend that I wanted. And maybe even pull it in a little closer to the actual character. And I think I'll be able to blend that out a bit better once I go in and start getting closer to the character. Now the plan is to go in with this, but like very diluted with water. So some of that and then some water. What color we're working? Maybe some more water. Just using a <laughs> spray bottle. I don't feel like getting up. I try to get as close to the character as possible. And if we go too close, I'm gonna be using that opaque acrylic marker. So it probably doesn't even matter. This will hopefully blend out those lines a bit. Like everything I'm doing, I'm trying to get it to look sort of like it's glowing. There we go, there we go. Keep working on this. There we go, that's the one leg done. It's a lot slimmer now. So now the character's silhouette's starting to shine through a lot more. Now it's the waiting game again. I just have to wait for this to dry and see what it looks like. Try my best. I'll do a thin stroke first and then maybe we'll go over it again. Trying to be sort of organic with it and not be too planned out so it looks a little bit more like lightning. Hey, that looks kind of cool actually, doesn't it? Now I'll try to add some more like depth to it so it's not all one exactly the same width line. So the next thing I need to do is fill in the silhouette of the character. I could probably turn this and start working on this part. I want those hair to be very pointy, kind of like lightning. I haven't decided if I want to fill the eyes in yet, so I'm just going to leave that. As is for now. I guess I'm pretty glad this wasn't a very fine tip uh, brush now. <laughs> I'm feeling in such a large area. It's kind of like a mummy because it doesn't have a very even coat. But I think if I go over it again once that's dry, I'll be able to do a lot better. Should I try and make it look like toes down here? There we go. Character's outlined. It does kind of have a glowing look, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Not too bad. What if I made the hair more like lightning? Like it. Ooh, ooh, that's different. Never drawn anything like that before. Maybe went a little overboard there. I'm gonna try and do another layer over the hair and see if that works. Try and get a more even coat. So yeah, I'm probably not gonna bore you with watching that, but I'm gonna go in and add a second layer <laughs> to this whole thing. That looks cool. Looks like she's wearing a little romper or something. <laughs> One leg left. Wow, that made a significant difference. I kind of like the eyes too, but I might make the pupils bigger. The thing we haven't used yet is uh, this zebra pen. Ooh, and it draws right on top of there, pretty good. What if I fill that in with the black? And then I could add an eyebrow. I feel like it needs eyebrows, but I feel like the eyebrow should be the blue color because I don't want to stray too far away from that color scheme we've got going on here. And I just like drawing eyebrows, so that's another reason. Okay, that eyebrow ended up being too high. 
I put some lips. Add some uh, shading under the chin. Ooh, what if we switch over to that light color? Can we get some shading? Ooh, that'd be cool. And then we could add some like, maybe to the center so it looks more like she's glowing outwardly. Does that make sense? Like if the center has a bit of a blue tint to it. And like the center of her body. Hey. There's some lines that sort of hint at things. Don't really like that line. Luckily, it seems to just blend right out of there. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm pretty happy with this, except for maybe that area over there. But actually, wait, let me go over the lightning one more time. Brighten it up even more. It's a little transparent currently. We go there, we tested the supplies, made some little thumbnails, came up with an idea, translated it to a larger canvas, I guess you could say. And there we have it. There's our finished illustration. How fun is that? Yeah, thanks for coming along with me on this drawing journey. <laughs> I had a lot of fun using these supplies and I wanna thank Palletful for sending me this box to try out and share with you. If you're interested in getting your own Palletful Pack subscription, I'll have a link in the description where you can check out the three tiers that they offer and see if one of them is right for you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys all next week and I hope you have a delicious evening full of levels. Bye.